let's take a look at one of the cool niche aspects of ham radio that's available to anyone with a technician class or hired license. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. A lot of my subscribers are GMRS guys, and if that's you, please don't click away. This aspect of ham radio may be just what you need to enhance your communications capability and might be the thing that helps you decide whether or not to get a technician class license to add to your communications toolkit. What we'll be talking about is APRS, or the Automatic Packet Reporting System. First off, APRS is not new. It's been around since the 1980s. With the advancement in several related technologies, however, APRS is now available to any ham for very little money. In this video, we'll take a quick tour of the APRS universe and in part two, we'll put together a very inexpensive APRS station using an inexpensive HT, an APRS cable, and your smartphone. Let's start the tour. Hey, just a quick break to let you know that you can support the Gadget Talk channel by using Buy Me A Coffee. It's a crowdsourcing platform where viewers can make a one-time donation or become a member of the Gadget Talk community. Your support helps provide resources to purchase some of the items reviewed on the channel. I'll put a link in the description below the video. Now, back to our topic. APRS began life as a U.S. Navy project to plot Navy position reports. It currently uses unnumbered AX25 frames transmitted for anyone to receive and use. Each frame or packet is complete or self-contained. Each frame is also limited in the data that it can contain. And by this I mean the amount of data, not the content. APRS can be used to report your position using GPS, broadcast weather info from APRS-connected personal weather stations, as well as transmit short messages of a more personal nature. Much of what is transmitted is position data. In fact, you'll often hear folks refer to APRS as Automatic Position Reporting System. This data can be very helpful for hikers and those using off-road vehicles in fairly remote areas. When plotted on a map, this data can be used to locate the user in case of an emergency or an accident. This data can also be used for such things as keeping track of weather watchers or those helping with a community event such as a 10k run or marathon. By having accurate position data displayed on a map, then organizers can easily see where the watcher or staff person is who is reporting an incident or asking for help. So, how does all this work? Good question. As with any communications model, there is a sender, the message, and a receiver. There are a couple of components that make up this message chain. So, let's take a look. As this slide shows, we'll look at a radio-based system in terms of the source of the APRS packet. For this radio-based message, you'll need a radio, a terminal node controller, or TNC, and a way to build or construct your message. In some cases, the radio and terminal node controller are found in the same device. More expensive handheld transceivers and mobile rigs often have at least some APRS functionality built in. In the example we'll be taking a look at, we'll be using separate but readily available devices. The radio can be just about any small ham HT. 
In the U.S., the APRS network uses the 2-meter band on a frequency of 144.39. Other countries may use different frequencies. We'll use the considerable computing power of modern smartphones as our terminal node controller, together with an inexpensive APRS cable to convert the digital signals from our phone or tablet to analog signals that our radio can transmit as an FM signal, just like we do when speaking into the mic. When the message leaves our radio, it has to be heard by something or someone. That something is a packet repeater, normally called a digipeter. Like other repeaters, a digipeter hears and rebroadcasts the packet. Other digipeters will hear the first repeater's broadcast and will broadcast the packet again. Any digipeter that hears the packet will rebroadcast it, allowing for a fairly wide coverage area. Some digipeters are connected to the internet. These devices are called eye gates for internet gateways. Again, as shown in the network diagram, signals that are heard by internet connected digipeters are also fed into the APRS data stream that is shared around the world via what's called APRS IS or internet servers. As the message sender, you assign a path to the message. HTs and mobile rigs will likely use the path wide 1-1 or wide 2-2. The first digit is the number of times you want your packet to be retransmitted by the Digipeter network. The second number indicates the number of hops your message has already gone. That means with a wide 2-2 path, after the first hop, the second Digipeter will see that the message has hopped once and will transmit the packet again. The third digipeter that receives the message will see that the message has hopped twice and will not retransmit the packet. This is all part of the plan to reduce network traffic since, in many areas, a single packet will be heard by several digipeters. This countdown system helps reduce the traffic of duplicate packets bouncing around forever. For many cases, the wide 2-2 will result in a packet being picked up by an iGate-enabled digipeter and being inserted into the internet data stream. Duplicate packets in the internet data stream are identified and removed. In APRS dense areas, wide 1-1 will get your message out just fine. In more remote areas, a wide 3-3 setting might be necessary. Since wide 3-3 allows for many more duplicate packet broadcasts, it's not normally a recommended path designator. Wide 2-2 will likely be enough. The most popular APRS messages are position reporting beacons. You have several choices when choosing how often to beacon out your position. These packets are picked up and can be displayed on a map. When going to a site like APRS.fi, you or anyone else can enter your call sign and time frame and see a track of your travels as reported by your beacons. This feature is quite helpful when you're out in the backcountry, so long as you're within Digipeter coverage, and that's important. Folks can see your location, which can be quite helpful in emergencies. If someone includes your call sign in the to field of the message packet, your radio will receive the message and your TNC will decode and display your messages. You can also use internet APRS tools and send emails and receive information by requests such as weather info and forecasts. For example, by addressing your APRS message to all capital email-2 and including your target's email address as the first text in the message, 
you will still have a few characters available to email a short message to any email address. For example, after arriving at a campsite with no cell data but with a ham digipeter coverage, you might send arrive safely. You could also address your APRS message to all capitals WXBOT or WeatherBot and type in tonight, tomorrow, or current. A few seconds after sending the message, you'd get a reply with the weather info you asked for. Up until just recently, you could also use an address that would convert your message into an SMS text to send to any text-capable smartphone. Unfortunately, government regulations overwhelm the sponsors of that service, and they've shut it down, at least for the time being. As with a lot of aspects of ham radio, whether you get excited about APRS or it leaves you flat, it's often a matter of personal interest and what kinds of topics and technologies you would like to explore. Join me over here for part two of this topic, where we'll take a look at an APRS station you can set up using an inexpensive ham HT, a $5 cable, and a $5 app for your smartphone. Thanks for watching and 73.